Hello, hello, hello. This is Nicholas once again on this lovely Friday afternoon wanting to do a spicy integral. This particular integral looks very nasty, especially with all the square roots on the bottom and then this x right out front on top of it, x squared minus one on the bottom. It just looks super yucky. Uh, it's actually very nice. <laughs> um, now, one thing that I see when I look at this integral, right? Uh, I kind of go through a list in my mind. You know, if I'm motivating my thought process, you know, what are the standard techniques of integration, right? We got U sub, we got integration by parts, a trig sub, um, partial fractions, and some maybe some clever manipulations, but that's basically uh, the main techniques that we have for for integration. Now, uh, parts, I really hope you can eliminate. See, you, you can see why we eliminate that. I mean, you know, taking derivatives of either of these square roots or integrating them would be extremely yucky. Um, trig sub, you know, you might think, okay, maybe I should complete the square under these radicals. But when you complete the square, right, you're going to get, uh, in this case, x plus 2 squared uh, minus th oh, x plus 2 squared minus 3. And then in the other case, you're going to get x plus 3 squared minus 8. And so you'd have to be subbing in two different things. So trig sub would not work because we're going to have an x plus 2 and an x plus 3. Um, partial fractions, right? Definitely not. U sub. <laughs> okay, so how are we going to get a u sub here? Well, Truthfully, it's it's somewhat experiential, but I will do my best to motivate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by this x here. And I'm going to get x minus 1 over x over square root x squared plus 4x plus 1, square root x squared plus 6x plus 1 dx. Now, um, let's look at x minus 1 over x, okay? Okay. Um, it's nice in a number of ways, this expression, right? x minus 1 over x. Uh, when I square it, I get x squared minus 2 plus 1 over x squared, um, which, is, which is good. That is just a nice fact that the x squared and the 1 over x squared cancel out. Um, and then also, if I were to take out a factor of x inside of each of these square roots, then that would become a square root x on the outside and a square root x on the outside, which would multiply to become an x times these two new square roots. And then I could divide x again into the numerator here, and I'd have a 1 minus 1 over x squared. Well, if I have 1 minus 1 over x squared on the top, I'd probably want to pick a u such that du is 1 minus 1 over x squared dx. Well, when I differentiate x minus 1 over x, I get 1 minus 1 over x squared. I want um, exactly that. <laughs> so that's what I should do. Okay. We have X minus one over X times, and then I'm going to pull out a factor of X in each of those, which becomes square root X on the outside, but I have two square root X's. So that becomes an X square root X plus one over X plus four square root x plus 1 over x plus 6 dx. And then I'm going to divide by that factor of x on the bottom again and get 1 minus 1 over x squared times x plus 1 over x plus 4 and then x plus 1 over x plus 6. And look at that. I mean, I have it right here. I have an x plus 1 over x and an x plus 1 over x. So 
I should let u be equal to 1 plus 1 over x. du then, or I'm sorry, x. <laughs> I was like, whoa, that didn't work out. I'm sorry, x plus 1 over x. It's, that's what I have. I have x plus 1 over x. Then du is 1 minus 1 over x squared dx, which is exactly what we have on the top right here. We get the integral of du over square root u plus 4, u plus 6, which becomes du over u squared plus 10u plus 24. And now hopefully you can see what to do with this integral. This is, this is a pretty standard integral right here, right? Uh, we should complete the square and do trig sub. So du over square root u plus 5 squared minus 1. And so I should let u plus 5 be equal to secant theta so that I get secant squared minus 1, which is tan squared, and then that becomes just tan theta after we apply the square root. So then du, secant theta, tan theta, d theta. And we get the integral of uh, secant theta, tan theta, d theta on the top. And on the bottom, we just get tan theta. The tan thetas cancel out very nicely, and we get the integral of just secant theta d theta, which is a pretty standard integral. It's something that I can't remember, so I'm going to have to derive it real quick. <laughs> 1 over cosine of theta. Oh, I remember now. It's a... Uh, okay, yeah. No, we're good. <laughs> which is natural log absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta plus, of course, the ubiquitous constant. Now, uh, we just have to figure out... We, we kind of did two layers of substitution, so we have to undo both of those. Okay, if u plus 5 is secant theta, what does that mean? We have this triangle here, uh, this angle theta. Secant is 1 over cosine. So cosine theta is 1 over u plus 5. 1 u plus 5. Yeah, and then what is this unknown side here, x? Well, uh, 1 plus x squared is equal to u squared plus 10u plus 25. And then um, x is just, I'll write it as u plus 5 squared minus 1. Take the square root. Okay, so we get natural log. Absolute value. Secant theta was just u plus 5. Tangent theta then would be plus square root u plus 5 squared minus 1. Absolute value. And then uh, u was x plus 1 over x. Oh, what plus c. So we get natural log. Absolute value. x plus 1 over x plus 5 plus square root x plus 1 over x plus 5 squared minus 1 plus c. And 